Creating a thriving productive garden takes a lot of planning ahead of time to set it up for success. And the more of that you can do, the more productive your garden is going to be through the entire growing season. So today I'm going to share with you some key tips for creating a thriving, bountiful vegetable garden. Any gardener will tell you, the hardest part and the most work happens before you ever put that first plant in the ground. Getting ready for a new gardening season is exhausting and there is no shortage of work. And I'm often asked, what do I do around here at the garden farm to get ready? What are those tried and true techniques for a productive, healthy garden and a bountiful harvest? And yet, it's never too early to set your garden up for success ahead of time. So let me share with you what I do to make that happen. First, ensuring that your garden where you will grow your food is in full sun will go a long way to having a productive garden. So if you haven't set up your garden yet, find a place where you can get eight hours a day or more of direct sun if possible. Next, focus on building the soil. You can do that in ground or in raised beds or grow bags or containers, but wherever you choose to grow your crops, give it the best soil that you can. What does that mean? Soil that drains really well but retains moisture is key. How do you do that? with lots of organic material, namely compost. Compost is something that you can make at home for free and it's the single best amendment that you can add to any soil to make it better. Suffice it to say, I make and use a lot of compost. Now, if that's not something that you can do at the moment, seek out the best store-bought compost that you can find. That may be by the bag, but if you can buy in bulk, it's much cheaper and you can often find really good compost from landscape supply companies. Even though I make a lot of compost, I still often use more than I make. So fortunately, I have a good supplier for that around here. But what you're after with your compost and soil should look dark and earthy. It's diverse in all the particle sizes. It binds together when you squeeze it, but it breaks apart when you run your fingers through it. Next, provide adequate spacing between your plants to give them access to plenty of light and air circulation. That will definitely help them be more productive and healthier too. Read the information on the tags or seed packets to know how much space to provide between plants and rows. Once your plants are in the ground or the seedlings are up, add mulch. Mulch is pretty much any natural material such as leaves, grass clippings, straw, and wood chips that acts as a protective layer over your soil that does so many things to help your garden. For starters, it helps keep weeds down. It reduces the chance of diseases getting on your plants from the soil. It keeps moisture in the soil by reducing evaporation. And as it breaks down, it makes the soil better by adding more organic matter. Next, think about how you're watering your plants. Ideally, you want to do that deeply but infrequently. You're shooting for about an inch of water per week. And when you do water, you want to do that just at the soil surface, not from overhead if you can avoid it. This is a much more efficient use of water and it keeps the foliage drier, which cuts down on the chance of diseases. Soaker hoses and drip irrigation are my watering methods of choice to do all of that. From there, be active in your garden and proactive in scouting for pests and diseases. Look for early signs of trouble and take preventative measures, not with pesticides, but by hand removal or physical barriers, such as row covers that block the pest from ever getting to your plants. And the same is true with diseases. Be on the lookout and when you see them showing up, remove the infected branches and get them out of your garden and into the trash. And keep your pruners or clippers clean between plants to reduce the chances of spreading the disease. And all along the way, maintain sufficient soil fertility. That can be achieved by the use of plenty of compost in your soil or supplementing it with a naturally derived source of organic nutrients. But don't overdo it and stick to the application rates on the packaging. And finally, plant a diverse garden because the healthiest vegetable gardens have a lot of flowering plants in them too to attract pollinators and beneficial insects so they can help you do your pest control for you. Plus your garden will be a whole lot more attractive too. And I hope that you found some key takeaways so that you can have a bountiful and productive vegetable garden also.